Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Intuition. Once again, it's me, Leo, here to host another video for you guys, for those of you still in the Netflix struggle. I was looking through my video archive, and I realized that I haven't done a video on diabetes. So in today's episode, we're going to tackle some diabetes questions. All right, stay tuned. video we're going to answer three questions on diabetes all right so let's dive right into it question number one question number one states a diabetic patient consumes 2,000 calories per day with 50% being made up of carbohydrates the patient's blood glucose is well controlled by a regimen of long-acting and rapid-acting insulin that amounts to a total daily dose of 25 units how many grams of carbohydrates are covered by one unit of rapid acting insulin in this patient. Okay, so this question might seem complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. But it is a memorization question, but it's a very simple formula to memorize. And the formula that you need to memorize is the formula that allows you to estimate, that allows you to estimate the grams of carbohydrates that's covered by one unit of insulin. And there are two different formulas. There's a formula for regular insulin, and there's a formula for rapid acting insulin. And in this case, this patient takes rapid acting insulin, so we're going to use that formula. And what is that formula? That formula is 500 divided by the total daily dose of insulin. Okay, very easy, right? So that's all you gotta do. And now all we have to do is go ahead and plug in. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 500 divided by the total daily dose of insulin, which is 25 units. So that's 500 divided by 25. And what's that? That's a very easy division to do. That's 20. That's 20 grams. So therefore, one unit of rapid acting insulin covers 20 grams of carbohydrate for this patient. So the answer is answer choice A, 20 grams. Easy. All right, let's go on to question number two. Okay, question number two states, the previous patient checks her blood glucose level before lunchtime and got a reading of 220 milligrams per deciliter. If her targeted preprandial glucose level is 130 milligrams per deciliter, how many additional units of rapid acting insulin should she administer? Remember, her total daily dose of insulin is 25 units. So here we're being asked to calculate a correction dose. And how do we do that? It's a very simple formula once again. This time for rapid acting insulin, we calculate the correction factor by dividing 1800 by the total daily dose of insulin. If it had been regular insulin, we would divide 1500 by the total daily dose of insulin. In this case, the patient is taking rapid acting insulin, so we do 1800. So we take 1800 divided by the total daily dose of insulin, which is 25 units, and 1800 divided by 25 equals, 1800 divided by 25 equals 72. So that is the correction factor. And now that we have our correction factor, how do we calculate our correction dose? Well, all we need to do is take the difference between the blood glucose level measured minus the targeted level or the desired level and divide that by the correction factor. So this patient, she checked her blood glucose and she got a reading of 220 milligrams per deciliter. But her target, is 130. So what's the difference between 220 and 130? That would be 90, right? So the difference is 90, and therefore we divide 90 by our correction factor that we calculated, which was 72. 90 divided by 72 is 1.25, and the closest whole number to 1.25 is one, so one unit. So this patient would just need to inject an additional unit of rapid acting insulin to cover, to cover her meal. And the answer would be answer choice A, one additional unit. See, there's a reason I didn't really cover a lot of these questions because they're real easy, right? Okay, now let's go on to question number three. Question number three is a little bit more challenging, but we got this. Okay, question number three states, how would you characterize the fundamental difference between diabetic ketoacidosis and a hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, HHS? DKA and HHS are two conditions that we need to be familiar with. So let's go ahead and look at the answer choices to see which one properly characterize the difference or the similarities between these two conditions. Answer choice A says, DKA is due to a lack of insulin and the need for alternative routes of energy, whereas HHS is due to a severe state of hyperglycemia and the need to lower blood glucose. Is that correct? 
Sounds pretty correct to me. DKA typically occurs in patients with type 1 diabetes. And patients with type 1 diabetes are patients who, who are insulin deficient. So DKA is a result of insulin deficiency. If you don't have insulin, you lose the ability to have your body utilize the glucose in your body. So you can have plenty of glucose in your body. You can have plenty of energy in your body. But without insulin, your body is not able to utilize that energy to get you to, to get your body to function properly. A type 1 diabetic is reliant on insulin. And if they don't take their insulin, then their body has to find a way to generate energy. And typically, that method is going to be to convert fatty acids into energy. So that's what DKA is. So you can think of DKA as energy efficiency and the need to generate energy by an alternative method leads to complications such as acidosis and, and ketone body buildup. And this answer choice also says that HHS is characterized by a state of hyperglycemia, which is exactly what it is. It says so in the name. It says hyperosmolar hyperglycemic. That means that you have such a high level of glucose in the body that, that it has a very high concentration that goes beyond, that it goes beyond the normal osmolarity of blood. And therefore the issue in this condition is to dump off a lot of that glucose and get that out the bloodstream, okay? So A definitely sounds like a correct answer. But let's go through the rest of the answer choices to make sure we're making the right decision. So B says, DKA and HHS are similar with the exception of sweet breath in HHS. The factor of sweet breath is not the only difference between the two. And in fact, sweet breath is accompanied with DKA, not HHS, because the sweet breath comes from a buildup of those ketone bodies in the bloodstream, okay? So this answer choice is definitely incorrect. C. C says HHS is due to a lack of insulin and the need for alternative routes of energy, whereas DKA is due to a severe state of hyperglycemia and the need to lower blood glucose. Okay, this question says the same thing that A says, but it says it backwards, right? So this will be incorrect. Finally, we have D. D says, DKA is a result of excessive aerobic respiration that leads to a buildup of lactic acid and a decrease in pH, whereas HHS is a result of a rapid metabolic rate that leads to an increase in pH. <laughs> Okay, this answer choice is funny because when it comes to aerobic or anaerobic respiration, that has to do with the activity that the person is doing. So if you're going to be running or sprinting, doing something that requires an explosive amount of energy, your body is going to go into anaerobic respiration because aerobic respiration is too slow. So aerobic, anaerobic respiration have nothing to do with DKA or HHS. They're two different phenomena and therefore D will not be the correct answer. And the correct answer will be answer choice A. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For those of you in the struggle, like I said, you guys are gonna do great on this exam. You got nothing to worry about. So hopefully you guys continue to watch. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the channel where we focus on concepts and we focus on understanding. We focus on understanding the world at a deeper fundamental level. And we cover videos not only in help here, but in a variety of different topics. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos and continue to support this channel. Uh, if you go ahead and like and subscribe, that will help the channel grow and help us to reach more people and to definitely build a better and more educated society. With that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for listening and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.